We're trying to make decisions, top-down decisions from Washington about what's best for individual families, when families should be making those decisions. Your thoughts on that, Ross? The market has demonstrated that the best way to actually become more efficient is to let the free market work its way and, and find the best products because the free market will always search for the most efficient, cheapest, and, and abundant way of doing something. So as these technologies grow and expand, the things like uh, micro-nuclear power become more mainstream, it's going to solve a lot of the problems that folks are most concerned about when it comes to pollution or, or climate change. Uh, but we have to let the market and, and the individual consumer make those decisions. Because if you try to go from the top down, you're gonna find everything gets more expensive it will not solve any of the problems they're, they're actually trying to address. It may actually make them worse. Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American Potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. Well, welcome to another edition of American Potential. Thanks for joining us. We continue to talk about the bad decisions that government makes and how they impact you. And if you've bought a new dishwasher in the past few years, does it seem like it takes longer for your dishwasher to finish washing the dishes? Our producer, Monica, she just bought a new dishwasher and it isn't even a full-sized one, but it takes almost two and a half hours to do a normal load of dishes. So why is it taking so long? Well, back in 2013, there were new regulations that went into effect on how many gallons per cycle the dishwasher could use, which means it now takes longer for the dishes to get clean. But dishwashers, they're not the only appliance that are being regulated by the Department of Energy. And over the past several months, you may have seen some headlines talking about banning gas stoves and new regulations for hot water heaters. You see, Capitalism is very good at meeting the needs of consumers and creating products that are efficient, that are valuable tools for everyday life. The problem is that government often has to step in and ruin a good thing. And often government passes regulations which make these products less useful, limits choice, and in some cases, renders the products almost useless. Now, I know it's not an appliance, but think about the new gas containers that once just poured gas into your lawnmower or your ATV, but now seem to put more gas on your hands and your shoes than in your mower. All because a bureaucrat somewhere thinks they know more about gas containers than the engineers who design them. So when it comes to appliances, these regulations aren't only happening at the federal level, but they're also happening at the state level. And that's why today we have two guests on to talk about these regulations. So first, I want to introduce Ilana Bloomsack, who is an economic policy analyst for Americans for Prosperity, and Ross Conley, who is a Northeast Regional State Director. Ilana, thanks for joining us. Ross, thanks for being with us. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us on, Jeff. Yeah, you bet. So, Alana, let me start with you. Can you first explain to us why and where the Department of Energy is getting the authority to make these regulations? Sure. So back in the 1970s, there was a massive oil crisis and gas crisis in the U.S. and around the world. Gas, gas was really scarce. Gas prices skyrocketed. You may have have even lived through it, or I did not, but remember seeing photos of long gas lines at, at gas stations, long lines of cars at gas stations. And so in 1975, uh, Congress passed the Envir Environmental Policy and Conservation Act uh, that Gerald Ford, the then President Ford signed. And included in that act uh, was a provision called the Energy Conservation Program for Consumer Products. And that essentially, that program essentially gives uh, the Department of Energy the ability to regulate and uh, maintain what they call quality controls over a whole handful of 
consumer appliances from stoves to dishwashers, washing machines, heating pumps, uh, furnaces, uh, a whole host of consumer appliances that we need to use in our homes and in our daily lives. Uh, a lot has changed since 1975. Uh, we went from having a great shortage of gas and of energy to being what we say at AFP, being energy abundant, and we want to maintain and increase that energy abundance. So a lot has changed since since that uh, since that law was passed, but it is still around and it is still what the Department of Energy uses today to try to restrict consumer choice and regulate what kind of products we can use. You, you talked about restricting consumer choice, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, you know, maybe an electric water heater works great for some people and in some parts of the country, but it's not going to work well in other parts of the country and it doesn't fit the needs of of some consumers. And ultimately, isn't that what this is about? Um, I mentioned that it seems like capitalism and, you know, business has a way of filling needs, right? If a consumer decides, you know, that's why we probably have electric and, and gas water heaters is because there's different needs for those. Um, government does have a way of coming in and saying, we're not going to let you choose. We're going to choose for you. Isn't this ultimately Ilana, what this is about? Exactly. That's absolutely what it's about. Um, you know, every family is different. Every region of the country is different. Um, you know, some people can afford to pay more for a more expensive induction stove or, you know, electric stove. Uh, and some people can't. And everyone needs, you know, a stove to be able to to make to make meals, uh, you know, and in some parts of the country, like I'm also originally from New England uh, in some parts of the country. Uh, natural gas is just a much cheaper and easier way to heat your home uh, in the wintertime. It is the cheapest way to heat homes in Massachusetts, for instance. Um, but even there, uh, people, you know, government, both at the federal level and at the state level, thinks they know better. And it really restricts choice for people all over the country and especially low income families who may not be able to afford a new appliance uh, every so often or for uh, repairs on a more expensive appliance. So this is a real problem for people all over the country. So uh, one last question for you, and then I'll go to Ross, but uh, which appliances do these regulations affect? So these, right. So right now what the Biden administration is targeting, uh, most notably they're targeting gas stoves. It's not an outright ban, uh, but the main, but, they have a proposed rule that they released back in January uh, that would essentially force um, gas uh, gas stove manufacturers to upgrade at least 50 percent of the current appliances on the market. So for new appliances in the future, they would have to change at least 50 percent of them in the future. Uh, they would have to be way more energy efficient um, and uh, would have to have. Uh, would have to have be entirely encased in um, in in a steel uh, you know uh, protective cover that a lot of gas stoves come with, so that would have to be entirely encased in that. So a lot of up a lot of upgrades. Um, that's the main regulation is a a, a restriction on on gas stoves. Uh, they recently came out with a final rule, so this is actually going to go into effect, banning most incandescent light bulbs to be sold in stores going forward, which is a huge problem for millions of Americans who use incandescent lights in their homes. Uh, incandescent lights are generally cheaper than LEDs. Um, and a lot of people, even if they can afford LEDs, prefer the lighting that incandescent lights provide. Uh, this has also impacted uh, dishwashers, uh, dish, uh, washing machines, dryers, air conditioners, gas, uh, gas uh, water pumps, uh, gas furnaces. Uh, so this has impacted a lot, a lot of um, of appliances. And this is just the Biden administration. The Obama administration targeted a lot of these same appliances as well. Um, these the Department of Energy under the Obama administration also made a huge push to make things, you know, quote unquote, better for the environment by restricting consumer choice and increasing regulations. A lot of um, what Monica and other people have seen is the, the rising costs of, of new appliances and the lack of efficiency in new appliances largely related to Obama era regulations, because a lot of the Biden era regulations have not yet gone into effect. Um, so, yeah, the Obama administration also targeted a lot of these same appliances and something that's been continuing throughout a lot of Democrat administrations. 
So Ross, let me let me go to you. I mean, what what's so what's sad about this really is that these regulations really do affect the people who can least afford to be affected by those, right? If you if you just you know if 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 you're a family barely making ends meet and you just bought a home and you know the dishwasher goes out or an appliance goes out, you're going to be paying more for this, and and there's there's a cost to that. It may not be a cost to uh, former President Obama, former President uh, George W. Bush, may not be a cost to me, or maybe, maybe you know, to, to the millionaires and billionaires that some politicians always like to go after, probably not a, a, a gigantic uh, cost to them for having to get these new appliances. But there is a real-world cost to that family that's struggling just to brand, maybe a brand-new home. Uh, they've got all these other, you know, inflation, everything else nipping at their heels. Uh, isn't that right? I mean, it seems like it's affecting those who can least afford to be hurt by this. Absolutely. Uh, that is that is the exact demographic, uh, ironically, that these policies go after. And as Ilana was alluding to, uh, you know, D.C., there there's a lot of discussions down on Capitol Hill and, and in Washington, D.C., about all these ideas of how we can have these top down solutions to, to solve all these massive problems and they'll just make it through rulemaking. But what's been happening is the states, especially in the Northeast and some on the West Coast, have been really taking those ideas and saying, oh, let's implement them. Uh, and it's happening in legislatures across the country. And unfortunately, the, the main people that are impacted by, by these rules and top-down solutions are, are the most vulnerable among us. The, they're the folks that are trying to make their way up the economic ladder but you're sticking more high at a time of high inflation. You're you're sticking more regulations that increase costs on on the average American. So the people that won't be able to afford that nice stove or that nice new washer and dryer uh, because there's no cheaper option because of regulations, those are going to be you know the the poor folks that are are struggling to get by. Yeah, it it does seem that. You know, it's it's almost designed, you know, to hurt them. And it sounds like we're going to have more signs. You know, we see every, almost every product has a label on it that says not for sale in California or whatever, because California has kind of gone about this and tried to to ban certain things that they don't that they don't like. Uh, it sounds like we're going to have more states that might that might be doing this um, in the future. Is that is that what we're going to see is more labels about this product can't be sold and doesn't that increase the cost of of products if you got to make 50 different products for 50 different states oh absolutely i at the the state level uh there have been around a dozen states that at least have at least toyed with the idea of banning uh internal combustion engine cars so banning gas powered cars and i think that's just the greatest example because if you look at the average cost of an electric car, which they want to mandate by 2030 or 2050, depending on the state, uh, the, the, the poor folks in that state will never be able to afford their own car. And it's just pricing them out of a market where what, what is the effect going to have on those folks' uh, job opportunities if they can't drive to their, their job? It's really a, a thoughtless experiment. Uh, that that's being jammed down the throats of of residents in these these states across the country, but especially across the Northeast, just really really bad short term uh, policy thinking and and what the potential impact of of these ideas could be. Yeah, and it's it's really on the backs of those as we said who can who can least afford it. Even cars themselves. I mean, I I've I've always wanted to do an episode. We're going to find the right guest for it, but just the cost of a of a vehicle these days and how much of that cost of say a, a vehicle, which, you know, you go buy a new pickup truck, it's 70 to a hundred thousand dollars probably to buy a new uh, pickup truck, which I know they don't generally drive those too much there in Washington, DC, I imagine, but uh, out in the real world they do. And you know, how much of that cost is driven by regulation is driven by this, this desire. And Ilana, I'll ask this question, not just about, I mean, the cars have done this, but these regulations, it's just like they just snap their fingers and say, we just magically want 
cars to get X number of miles per gallon, or we magically want a dishwasher to be this efficient. They don't know how to do it. They aren't engineers. They don't know how to design it. They just, as politicians and as bureaucrats say, well, this is what we want. And they leave it for someone else to figure out how to do that, how to, how to design such a product, but also they don't seem to care about the cost of that product when it's designed. Exactly. Um, and the manufacturers of all of these products have been very much opposed to these new regulations. And they talk about the fact that they will have to redesign, for instance, 50 percent of gas stoves uh, if this new um, gas stove regulation goes into effect. Um, and they'll have to redesign uh, dishwashers and d- d- clothes dryers uh, and gas and heat pumps and all of that. And that increases costs for everyone, right? It increases costs for the manufacturers themselves who have to now go back to the drawing board, redesign everything, rebuild everything. That then those costs that again that then get passed to consumers when they go purchase uh, a, a new appliance, and everyone has to purchase a new appliance, right? You can have a great appliance from twenty years ago before a lot of these regulations took effect, but at some point it's going to break down. And you will have to buy a new appliance. So everyone is going to be affected at some point by this um, and and pay for that when they go to purchase um, a new appliance. But then that, you know, if you go from a gas appliance to an electric appliance, your costs are your just utility costs are going to go up, generally speaking, especially in the northeast, but elsewhere in the country, generally speaking, electric heating and, and electricity costs are more expensive than than natural gas. So even your utility bills might increase just month to month in addition to paying more for the appliance when you first bought it. And then, you know, it might be more expensive to get it repaired and maintained and all of that. So your costs just overall are going to be increasing and have already begun increasing, right? If an appliance is less efficient as Monica's dishwasher was, and as we hear that a lot of these dishwashers and washing machines, when they put um, water, quote unquote, water efficiency regulations on them. You know, you have to wash clothes multiple times. Your cycles take twice as long to wash dishes or wash clothes as they used to. And so that's also costing you money and time and all of that. So overall, while the Department of Energy always says that there is some amount of cost saving, which usually amounts to about a dollar per year, which is nothing, uh, in reality, everyone's costs increase and the increase from the very beginning when you go to buy that new appliance to maintaining it to all the time spent waiting longer and longer for cycles to finish. It's just overall costs go up for everyone. Yeah, I don't want to get too graphic here, but like I'm thinking of the toilet regulation that went to low flow toilets. Right. Are they really saving that much water consumption if instead of no. flushing one time, you have to flush three times? <laughs> it's, exactly. I mean, it's crazy. Exactly. That, um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Research has shown uh, that after uh, new washing machine regulations went into effect uh, or new dishwasher re- regulations went into effect in the Obama administration, actually water use for dishwashers actually increased uh, because, of course, it did. Right. I mean, your dishwasher takes twice as long to work and you're washing sure. dishes multiple times. Of course it did. Right. right. Uh, so it's not the regulations are not achieving what they aim to achieve and they're costing Americans all over the country, both the manufacturers and the consumers, a lot more money, a lot more time. Um, It's just not worth it. All right. I'm going to ask both of you this. I'll start with you, Alana. I mean, you talked about they aren't solving what they aim to achieve. I mean, what is what are we trying to solve here? What's the problem that we're trying to solve for with? I mean, I, I thought my dishwasher was working pretty good. I thought my heater, my you know, my my furnace was working great. All of a sudden now there's all these problems that others are trying to solve for. What's the problem they're trying to solve for? So it actually really depends on the appliance. Um, All of them are under this break. Whoops. Hold on one sec. Sure. Second, I'm the light went out. Oh, it's back. Um, (laughs) The lights on it. The lights on a timer. That was that was well timed. That was well timed as you're talking about energy costs. Yeah, the lights on a timer. Um. Yeah, so all of them are under this big umbrella of climate change, right? And so uh, that they want to make uh, appliances more energy efficient, energy friendly, and and better environmentally friendly. But it really depends on what the appliance is. 
So, for instance, for gas powered appliances, such as gas stoves or gas uh, or gas heating pumps, um, there, there are really two parts to this. The first part is that gas just, at least according to environmentalists, is just worse for the environment, right? It uses it, it releases way, way more carbon dioxide, for instance, and methane into the air than, uh, you know, a, a, than, than an electric pump. Uh, and then the other thing that uh, envi- that environmentalists that we cite also when it comes to gas is health related issues, right? So that it might be worse for people with asthma or other uh, respiratory issues. Uh, it might be worse for them uh, and things like that. And then when it comes to water based appliances like dishwashers or washing machines, there's uh, this argument about, you know, conserving water. Uh, you know, that, you know, we, we don't have enough water, there are droughts and things like that. And so we need to conserve water. But of course, as we know, it ends up using more water than it did before. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's not conserving anything, really. And um, yeah, our, our, in, our energy situation today is also way different than it was in 1975, when this when the law that g- gave the Department of Energy this power was passed. Um, we are no longer in a real scarcity situation when it comes to energy and we shouldn't be that way we shouldn't go back to that uh and yeah uh i, I don't think those arguments hold hold much weight right uh ross how, how about you i mean is what's the what's the problem we're trying to solve for here uh so a lot of what, what alana said uh is carries at the state level too uh is this push for climate change uh, addressing climate change net zero uh, it, it, it's sort of odd uh, to think about because I, I live in the, the great free state of New Hampshire uh, where cold kills uh, like cold is no no joke. And mm-hmm. across the Northeast, we already have a, a, uh, a shortage of natural gas across the Northeast. It's mostly due to the failure to build new infrastructure pro- projects to bring more natural gas into the region. Uh, but. To to then do what Vermont's doing or New York, where they're they're going after after the supply of natural gas, the the, the under supply of natural gas we already have, uh, that's actually dangerous, and uh, it, it comes to a point where uh, you have to look at at cost benefit and and the entire situation where. The great irony is that the United States has seen a a reduction in carbon emissions driven almost entirely by the the uh, usage of natural gas. So uh, they want a a lot of these states. Vermont wants to move towards more things like biomass, which is just the burning of wood. Um, I don't see how that's cleaner than bringing in natural gas to use an efficient uh, HVAC units. uh, But it's it's almost something straight out of Atlas Shrugged by by Ayn Rand, where it's just really silly top down decisions that might have a massive, massive impact on economies. I can tell you just from our engaging on the natural gas issue in, in Vermont, uh, one of the biggest opponents was the restaurant in, uh, association, because what restaurant have you ever been to in your life where they use electric stoves? They, they don't. They have to use natural gas stoves. Uh, so it's just politicians thinking uh, that they can, as you said, Jeff, wave a magic wand and get what they want, but not thinking of any of the next uh, uh, potential uh, negative consequences of their policy. So, uh, Ross, what, what what advice would you give to people if, if they're in some of these states, particularly? And we can talk about the federal stuff in a minute, but let's talk about the state part of this. Uh, what would you say to folks who li- are living in these states and uh should they contact their legislators i mean what's the best thing they can do absolutely Uh, most of these bills across across the country are either still being worked on through the process or there's still opportunity to uh to stop it from happening even in the state of vermont there's a two and a half year window where you can make your voice heard to to try and stop the the law from being implemented uh, but talk to your representatives, talk to your senators. You have to get involved and speak up because the other side is a very, very vocal minority. And uh, the only way you're going to effectuate change in this area is to speak up and, and actually push back on it. And, and that takes getting involved with your legislature, getting involved with your local AFP chapter, I always recommend. But 
uh, no matter what you do, just just make your voice heard. Yeah, and, and folks can send me, you can send me an email at jeff at americanpotential.com. I'll get you connected to whoever in your state so that you can you can uh, start connecting with legislators on this issue. Uh, what what states specifically, Ross, have you seen this rearing its ugly head in? Uh, so there's varying degrees. If you look at light bulbs, the regulation on light bulbs, there's about a dozen states. But the this, uh, clean energy standard, which is usually the terminology for a lot of the natural gas stuff, uh, has been uh, the first state that it became law in is the state of New York. Um, and then the state of uh, Massachusetts has been talking about it. They actually, in Massachusetts, just uh, one of their biggest problems is housing costs. So they decided, how do we address housing costs? We're going to set up this giant climate fund to make uh, housing more expensive. So uh, in almost every single state across the country, you will see some form of these bills. It's just, is there a chance that would it would actually pass? I would say no matter what, you should speak up. Yeah, I, I love what Jesse Mallory did in Colorado. They were, legislature tried to pass a bill that that banned gas-powered lawnmowers, and he organized a group of citizens and others to go to the Capitol and he brought goats and he called it the goat full employment act because obviously if you get rid of all lawnmowers, you got to have something to, 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 you know, cut your lawn. So he figured that the goats would do it. I thought that was a clever way to do it, but I mean, there are people who really actually want us to go back to, to, to sort of living that way. I mean, I, I don't know. It just seems like we're taking choice away from people in all of these and we're trying to make decisions top-down decisions from Washington about what's best for individual families when families should be making those decisions. Your thoughts on that, Ross? Yes, I, I think the market has demonstrated that the best way to actually become more efficient is to let the free market work its way and, and find the best products because the free market will always search for the most efficient, cheapest, and, and abundant way of doing something. So as these technologies grow and expand, the things like uh, micronuclear power uh, expand and, and become more mainstream, it's going to solve a lot of the problems that folks are most concerned about when it comes to pollution or, or climate change. Uh, but we have to let the market and, and the individual consumer make those decisions, because if you try to go from the top down, you're going to find everything gets more expensive. And to a lot of Alana's points, it will not solve any of the problems they're they're actually trying to address. It may actually make them worse. Yeah. I mean, did did has the government made toilets better? Have they made dishwashers better? Have they made I mean, nothing that I can think of that be gee, this regulation actually made it a better product for the consumer. And it, it it never does. It almost always makes it a worse product. And as you point out, the, our capitalist society, free markets have a way of figuring out efficiency and, and driving towards efficiency. I mean, you know, car, uh, car manufacturers are going to make a car that gets better gas mileage because people will want to buy that car. They'll spend less money on gas if you just allow them to do it through free market uh, dictates rather than dictates from the federal government or from from policymakers. Ilana, um, what about at the federal level? What can folks do? I mean, I think they feel though as though the Biden administration is just seems like every week we're hearing now they want to regulate stoves. Now they want to do this. What can people do if they want to push back on some of this regulation? So I think really there are two things people can do. The first thing people need to realize is that just because you hear that some, you know, the Biden administration is going to regulate this new appliance, uh, Proposed rules from federal agencies like the Department of Energy go through a very lengthy process before they become final. So a lot of these rules are still in the quote unquote proposed stage. Uh, and generally after a rule is released and proposed, uh, there's usually a 30 to 60 day comment window where folks can share their thoughts. A lot of policy organizations such as AFP, we also comment on rules um, at Department of Energy and elsewhere all the time. 
Uh, so that's something to keep in mind um, that, you know, folks can do that or they can reach out to AFP and tell, hey, we really want you guys to, to comment on on on, on this uh, on X. Uh, and then also that there are bills at the federal level right now in Congress uh, that especially uh, when it comes to gas stoves, that working to try to prevent the government from the federal government from having this power to overregulate and, and ban gas stoves. Uh, for instance, our representative Debbie Lesko uh, of Arizona introduced the Save Our Gas Stoves Act, uh, which passed the House of Representatives and is now being sent to the Senate. Uh, that would pro- that would prohibit the Department of Energy from banning gas stoves. Uh, there's a similar bill uh, that was introduced actually bipartisanly uh, by Senator Ted Cruz and, Joe Man- and Senator Joe Manchin uh, in the Senate that would not go quite as far, but would also aim to reduce the amount that um, the, go- the federal government can regulate and ban gas stoves. Um, so th- also contact your representatives at the federal level, especially in the Senate, because both of these bills have passed the House and are now in the Senate. So uh, contact your 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 your, legis- your, your local uh, representatives, your local senators uh, to get these bills passed um, as well. Yeah. And these bills now, these bills that you're talking about are not to regulate gas stoves, exactly. but it's to it's to reverse it's to, what the Biden administration stopped them from to, doing this. It, right. It's to reverse what the Biden administration right. has done and also prevent it from happening in the future. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. OK, well, listen, I, I really appreciate both of you taking the time to 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 join us on this. This is something that I think it frustrates people and we have to figure out a way to connect average everyday Americans to th- that. This isn't just happening in a vacuum. The reason a dishwasher is going to cost more in the future is directly related to a bad policy implemented by the government. I actually think dish. I mean, if you look at televisions, televisions, the price of televisions has plummeted over the years. Uh, the price of computers has plummeted over the years. Um, the only reason we're going to see increases in the cost of these kinds of products is because of terrible decisions by the government, bad government regulations. So, Whatever uh, uh, you all do, thank you so much for for helping shed some light on this for for people and engaging people. I guess my final question for both of you is, you know, what what can people do if they want to uh, get in touch with Americans for Prosperity? You, you know, do, uh, you know, contact the legislators. What's the easiest way for them to do that, Alana? Uh, I would say um, go to go to. Uh Americans to go to the Americans Prosperity uh, website. Uh, also look at contact pages for your local uh, legislators um, on their websites as well uh, to make your to make your voice heard. Yeah. And Ross, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I just say please visit Americans for Prosperity dot org and go to the Action Center. We are across the Northeast. So uh, if you do live in New York, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts, Maine, any of these places, uh, you have a, a site right there with your state. You can take action on, on some of these issues at the federal level and state level. So uh, just get involved and, and uh, reach out to your to your local AFP office if, if you want to do something more. Yeah, the way that this kind of nonsense gets stopped is when people, you know, reach out and organize over it. And they should be doing that. I'm surprised. And maybe there are, you know, Facebook groups or whatever to, you know, Stop the stop taking my stove from me, uh, you know, my gas stove. I don't know if there's groups out there, but there need to be groups out there. Citizens need to stand up and fight. But thanks both of you for for joining us today. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you for having us. You bet. Well, listen, it's all up to you if if we're going to stop these kind of silly decisions by government. And again, it seems like every week there's another one, whether it's a regulation of this appliance or next week they want to do this one or you know, we, we just see them rolling these things out week after week. It's usually on a Friday afternoon, by the way, when they seem to roll these out. And I wonder why that is. So nobody notices. Hopefully you don't notice. But hopefully you do notice and you take action. And that's what we hope you will do at Americans for Prosperity. Hey, thanks for listening to American Potential. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com.